It's time for another master cast. This time I'm squaring off against Faust in a 1v1 High Elves versus the Empire. So let's take a look at our build here, and it will be one that we're pretty familiar with so far. Uh, don't worry, I do have some plans to give you guys uh, builds where I'm not just playing the High Elves. So taking a look at what we have here, um, you can see we have a nice concave in the back of Lothern Seaguard. One, two, three, and four, in fact. A nice front line of Spearmen, three, and then two units of Phoenix Guard followed by a Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, as well as the, the typical uh, triplet here of my Flamespire Phoenix, uh, Lother, or I'm sorry, Lore Master of Hoeth, with just Spirit Leech and Earthblood this time, no Harmonic Convergence, and then the Dreaded Tyrion. Now for Faust's army, let me pause this real quick actually, just so we don't, uh, it's a little bit easier for me to follow. You can see the front line is comprised mainly of two units of spearmen and three uh, swordsmen. And we're going to see in the back line two spearmen accompanying two mortars. And then a central line of two units of demogriff knights and then an empire knight unit. As well as the silver bullets and gunners. These guys of course have their magic damage that they do. So let's see this fight underway here. We also, uh, don't forget... Uh, don't forget, as in you, the viewer, me, of course, the uh, broadcaster. Don't forget, we have a Jade Wizard with a Power Stone, Earth Blood, and Regrowth, as well as Carl Franz with the Reichland Runefang and Galmaraz, and Standard Ground, as well as Foe Seeker. So, we're going to go ahead and press play here and see this underway. Let's kind of talk a little bit about how I uh, set up here. So, we're using the left side of this map. You can see as we kind of look over here, um, if I kind of get down a little bit, you can see that this slope is a little bit lower than this one. So, we're utilizing this left portion. And uh, we're trying to get our Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower in range. Uh, right, Mainly, it's going to be firing at Carl Franz. We want to just get some initial damage onto him. I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. There's not really a whole ton to, that goes on this very initial portion. And we're going to be using our uh, Phoenix to do some scouting. I'm already getting some blasts here onto our Lothern Sea Guard. Now, the nice thing about a mortar is that it does a lot of damage to uh, regimental standard lines, like when you take a look at the High Elves. Uh, because it has a high blast radius, they have tight, dense formations, though so those two in conjunction means a lot of damage get poured into the High Elves by the Mortars. So a great choice by Faust using those Mortars. We're already using the anti-large shot here onto Karl Franz, getting some good initial damage into him. Only one of those hit. Knocking off what? I don't, I don't even know how, many, how much health, like I think 300. <laughs> but um, as, our, uh, as our units kind of get in formation, we didn't want to just move forward. If I had just... Um, right clicked and rotated to have everything move, they would have moved kind of jankety like this. So we set up in this location here and then move forward. Mortar team though is starting to shoot into our Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, which is good actually. Um, by him choosing to shoot at my Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, Faust being, um, all of my units can now move forward unimpeded by the damage from the mortar. And the mortar, those are six mortar shots pounding into me every time that they can reload. That'll do a ton of damage. If it focuses down my Phoenix Guard, it'll delete them in like three or four full sets of rotations depending on how accurate they are. But as you can see here, they have now moved into my Lothan Sea Guard. Look at that. That's one full volley doing almost three-fourths damage. It is so devastating. Flamespire Phoenix, though, is looking to kind of scout around, see what it can kind of reveal. Remember, the uh, the Silver Bullets do have stock, as I can, I can try and get that. Ah, there it is, stock and hide. Well, hide and force, I always have. Silver Bullets getting some shots here onto the Flamespire Phoenix, but remember, the Flamespire Phoenix is just looking to juke Carl Franz and reveal the location of both mortars and the uh, Silver Bullets. I mean, there is a little bit of a, a decline on this hill, so it does kind of... Um, um, uh, block their line of sight. But more mortar shots are going down on this unit of Lothern Sea Guard, and what we're going to be doing here, as you can see, all of my Lothern Sea Guard are focusing on the mortar. Like I said before, you do not want your uh, range fire to split fire. You want it to focus down one thing. All four of these are just going to just unleash hell on this mortar. Let's go ahead and uh, continue this play, and we'll, we'll see how this goes. Yes, I know Carl Franz is kind of swimming around here. He's an easy target for all of my Lothern Sea Guard, but that's not the focus right now. If we can shut down those mortars, then we have the chance to blob, and we can really kind of use the defensive characteristics of our Phoenix Guard and of our Martial Pro S to our advantage. Right now, though, uh-oh, uh-oh. Wait for it. Boom! 
Now, I made a huge blunder here, and again, I'm going to talk about this more. Um, like I typically do with our master casts, we're going to go through the game, and we're going to go through some of the finer points that Falcom was kind of uh, coaching me through, as well as the big hammer of the game. But by doing this, I managed to allow Faust to get really a three for one here. These two units of Lothan Seaguard and the Spearmen were all, were all hit by those two shells of mortars because I just didn't have them on defense, right? Uh, on defensive stance initially. You want to make sure your archers and your artillery pieces are on defensive mode. So you don't get that kind of action where they overlap onto each other and do a lot of damage to themselves, really. But again, Flamesfire Phoenix looking to kind of get a good uh, location for a bombing run. Our Lothan Sea Guard have now again focused onto our mortar teams here, and the Silver Bullets are returning fire into them as well. Jade Wizard doing an Earth Blood onto the mortar, trying to kind of shore up some of that damage that they're getting from the Lothan Sea Guard to help mitigate a lot of what's coming in, and there is so much damage coming out. Now that we've broken both mortar teams, though, our Lothan Sea Guard are going to switch fire onto Karl Franz, hoping to drop some damage onto him. A good bombing run onto the Silver Bullets, but Faust is able to move out of it just in the last minute, preventing them from completely getting capsized by the uh, little birdie poops from the Flamespire Phoenix. Now, as you can see, the uh, Demogriff Knights and Empire Knights are looking to do a surround on my army. The nice thing, though, about what I have in my formation is, <clears throat> excuse me, all of our Lothan Sea Guard do have charge defense against large foes. So even if I'm having them just kind of passively firing thing towards things, oh, these guys are not braced and they're just going to get Rick rolled by that Demogriff Knight charge right in the rear too. Um, but again, the nice thing about having charge defense is that if you have your uh, your units passively kind of standing there shooting, they can still take those charges from those creatures and, and still kind of win the day. But one thing to keep note of, when it comes to charge defense, let me see if I can find a unit to, to best exemplify this for you guys. So charge defense only applies in this radius. So even if you're charged from the front here, charged from the front here, or flanking charge or rear charged, your charge defense will not work, and you have to be braced. Braced means you are not moving, you are standing still, your, your spearmen are holding their uh, their spears at the ready, ready to take a charge. So charge defense only works in that, in those, in that small radius in front of you. All right, so our Lothern Sea Guard, though, have now switched targets onto Big Daddy Carl Franz. Uh, we have our Lothern, we have our Phoenix Guard and Spearmen here trying to fight off both the Demogriff Knights and uh, Carl Franz as well. We have Tyrion jumping into the fray, trying to get some good damage onto uh, the mighty uh, Emperor of Altdorf himself. Get him just jumping into that. He, he has Galmaraz, Riker Runefang, and Spirit Leech dropped onto him right now. Um, a lot of damage is going on to the Emperor. A Sun Fang about to rip through the Spearman here, but Faust reacts very well and gets his Spearman out of that big blast. That would have completely nuked that unit. But Karl Franz is almost out of this whole entire fight right now. He's taken so much damage from the Flamestar Phoenix, from Tyrion, from the Lothern Sea Guard combined effort against him. And look at this. Unfortunately, I do let a unit of Phoenix Guard just kind of get pulled away from my main fight, fighting force. With my specific build, it's very important that I keep unit cohesion and units fighting together. But it could pretty good engagement for me. I do have Spearmen fighting against Empire Knights that are kind of getting mucked up in the front of this unit. We've talked about this before, though. Um, Spearmen are not an effective anti-large unit. Um, you can pull in and out of Spearmen when you're using cavalry forces. Uh, if you're talking about single entities, they can't get a solid enough amount of damage, even if they surround it. Um, they're really your big anti-large. Boom! Nice devastating rear charge into those Demogriff Knights. Uh, really, your anti-large forces are going to be uh, relegated mainly to two missing uh, bombs right there and there. Are relegated mainly to ranged units, especially ranged AP units. Those are the ones that are really going to capsize large units there. Charge coming in of Swordsman right onto my Lothern Sea Guard, shutting down the archery play here. Karl Franz jumping up drastically in health as well, and a good charge in from some Empire Knights. Faust really keeping a lot of pressure onto my uh, firing line, onto my uh, Lothern Sea Guard, while I really try to wheel around the battlefield th this entire time. Tyrion, though, can on his own go and face a lot of these charges, especially against Demogriff Knights. There's not a lot of them that really threaten him, especially because these are just Demogriff Knights, not Demogriff Knights with halberds, so he can do a lot of damage to them. Chasing down this Demogriff Knight unit, trying to completely remove it from the battlefield, we have this unit of Phoenix Guard fighting off against some spearmen. Now, if we take a look at this real deep portion, this deep pocket, we can see some pretty devastating things happening. This small unit of mortars is starting to come back, and they're going to be jumping on a mortar crew again. 
Same thing here with this unit of Silver Bullets. They are still back in the fight, and the Rangers are doing some damage. Another heal coming down, though. I believe it's right on. Yeah, onto, uh, onto Mighty Carl Franz, a regrowth. Um, when If you have to choose between regrowth and Earthblood, you want to use regrowth on a, on a very pivotal unit, single entity target, rather than Earthblood on a pocket. Because more than likely... Uh, remember how low Carl Franz was three, four minutes ago? Uh, this has allow allowed him to really come back in the fight uh, with a lot of really pointed and really um, poignant uh, regrowths. Earthblood, though, dropping down onto my main pocket force here, getting a lot of healing done. Uh, remember, Earthblood is capped out now at the amount of units it can recover, so it looks like it mainly hit the Flame Fire Phoenix and some other ones, uh, but that did wear off quite quickly. Our, our Phoenix Guard unit from the back is now coming back into this fight uh, with some other Demogriff Knights over here joining this big pocket warfare. Now, I have blobbed up over here because I wasn't... I, seem, I think at this point my camera was facing like this. So I was not aware that these hurling shells from the mortar team were about to strike into my pocket. Which, boom! 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 Okay, those two missed. But this one did some damage. <laughs> As you can see, though, at that point, when you're not really worried about the AoE damage coming in, you can really blob up. That's that's a really big strategy, especially with um, this amount of pointy, speary, anti-large AP units um, with all the Phoenix Guard and all the little Sea Guard and all my Spearmen. You can really just make a big Helm's Deep here. But now with that Mortar Team back online, it forces me to scatter. You can see my units going to the seven winds here, to seven seas, uh, to all the winds of whatever the hell I'm trying to say. And again, my Flamesfire Phoenix is caught up in the air by a devastating charge from Carl Franz, knocking a huge chunk of health down from him. And unfortunately, I have to get that Phoenix landed quickly or else I am going to lose him. Tyrion's real high damage output is completely wasted right now since he is just sitting on the ground and not up in the air. Boom! A massive mortar shellage into the Lothern Sea Guard. Um, as they try and knock out the Silver Bullets, and then the Flamesfire Phoenix going for a, a kind of a last-ditch kamikaze effort onto this Mortar Team, and Tyrion jumping headlong into the Spearmen. Again, not really much of a worry there with those Spearmen. And you can see here, I did manage to get a bombing run down right the last minute as I got the Flamesfire Phoenix on the ground, so he was able to drop a big poop of destruction, knocking this Mortar Team out once again. And boom! Our little tiny uh, Flamespire Phoenix grows and becomes another Flamespire Phoenix as, he's, as he regrows. Unfortunately, though, he is already broken, and he probably will not be able to come back from this if Carl Franz is, uh, stays in pursuit. But as we can see from the rest of this fight, uh, Tyrion is jumping around from charge to charge. We're keeping all of our Phoenix Guard together. Uh, we're keeping our Lord Master of Hoeth with them as well. And we're getting any kind of, kind of mop-up that we can. Uh, our repeater bolt thrower was shut down long, long ago, and unfortunately I did not... Uh, focused in on that, but it was from a lot of the cavalry elements of Faust's force. Uh, what I will say is, Faust definitely has mobility over me. Um, I, I clearly have nothing to really counter these guys aside from letting them charge into me and dealing with the charges I best I can. Faust getting a good wrap up on this unit though, because I was uh, I did not spaghetti line it when I told it to come back into my force. This is going to be very devastating because now we have another spearman charge as well as a demogriff knight charge, looking to end this unit of spearmen that would have otherwise been able to join this pocket. Mortar team back online once more, looking to do a lot more damage to my consolidated force, which is blobbing around, going from target to target. The nice earth blood down onto all four of these units. Since I'm capped out at four units for my earth blood, it's going to be able to get all four of them. It's an overcasted one as well, so it'll be able to heal me for a little bit longer. Uh, Phoenix Guard, though, are approaching their healing cap, as you can see, and these guys will unfortunately no longer be able to benefit from the glory of earth blood, as uh, we are really kind of short up now when it comes to health. <clears throat> if our fight was just this, these remaining forces, we'd be okay. But unfortunately, <clears throat> there are some Demogriff Knights, there are some uh, Empire Knights, and of course a Mortar Team is continuing to pound into our force. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Carl Franz, though, has completely chased off our Flamespire Phoenix. He's coming back around to do some more damage with the dreaded Gaul Miraz. Now, Tyrion is still full health. Uh, and the big thing with Tyrion is you want to continue to keep him engaged. If he's not engaged in combat, he will not regenerate his Sunfang. That's why you've only seen one Sunfang go off this entire time. Tyrion looking to just kind of face the charge in of those Empire Knights as a mortar shell rips into these Phoenix Guard, who double back on their charge onto the Spearmen and come around to these Empire Knights, hoping to cut down some of the mobile elements of uh, Big Daddy Faust's armor, or army. 
and Carl Franz dropping onto both our Lower Master of Hoeth and our Phoenix Guard. <clears throat> Tyrion and the other Phoenix Guard responding in kind, but look, he just kind of squeezes right out of this. A Spirit Leech dropped onto him with a little bit of damage. We're, really, the big issue here is that I do have Phoenix Guard, and they do a lot of AP damage, and they do a lot of anti-large, and that's great. But I cannot combat the mobility of Carl Franz. I have no Malkos Misfying Miasma to slow him down. I have no mobile units to pin him in that are large entities. It's really just Tyrion who can just scare him off every time he gets a charge. And right now, Faust can just cycle charge me over and over and over. And it's happening right here. <clears throat> As he swings around, goes right for the Lord Master of Hoeth. And then right back here into Tyrion, getting a good chunk of damage off. Going right back around again. And a big thing Faust has too are these Demogriff Knights. They do add a lot of mass to his charges, preventing me from moving around with Tyrion, who can otherwise really threaten a... Uh, Carl Franz. Carl Franz is a little bit of a glass cannon. He does a lot of damage, but if he cannot take a sustained amount of damage quickly. And his Jade Wizard has a lot of regrowth and earth blood that he's been saving to use here. Um, getting, trying to get a little Sun Fang down to knock out this two, these two units of Swordsmen. Looks like it rips in just a little bit into my Phoenix Guard. Unfortunately doing some damage to them, but knocking these two units out by wavering them and shaking them up on the battlefield. Another charge down from Tyrion. Trying to kind of bait out these charges and bring them back into my uh, pointier Phoenix Guard and getting a good surround here. Looking to try and do some damage to the Emperor of Altdor. Foe Seeker and Stand Your Ground are popped as well as Tyrion's nothing. <laughs> Earthblood, though, going down on Karl Franz to keep him short up, though, as he deals with damage from the Loremaster of Hoth and Tyrion. Look, Tyrion is down to 50% health. He is a better combatant than Karl Franz, but Karl Franz has been able to get so many good charges repeatedly on and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Another one coming down right here. Boom! A chunk of damage landing into him, knocking him around. He's really low in health right now. And Lord Master of Hoeth, sure, he's healthy, but Faust isn't worried about that. He's He wants to really put Tyrion underwater right here. I'm trying to just completely knock out the leadership elements of my army. And it's really, it's been a struggle right now. Tyrion cannot get a good foothold on Karl Franz, who's been able to just come down right again and boom, smash right into him and completely terrify him off the battlefield. Now, uh, he will come back. He did get a little bit of his Heart of Aberlorn burst of health there, but it might be a little too late at this point. Trying to get back, trying to get back. And our Phoenix Guard are broken now, too, and it's just the Lord Master of Hoeth. Demogriff Knight's chasing him down. He manages to finally get out of that, jukes this charge out from Karl Franz, and wraps around to rejoin the Lord Master of Hoeth and the rejoining uh, Phoenix Guard. That's the one thing I really don't like about Tyrion. He should have immunity uh, to psychology, or immunity to psychology, I feel. But, you know, that's neither here nor there right now. Karl Franz looming over the battlefield like a just a hungry vulture looking to feast upon uh, Tyrion's empty helmet. Coming down with another big charge into him. Reichland Runefang giving him leadership and melee attack. Phantom Repost, uh, Repost jumping in as well with melee defense, physical resistance, and melee attack. But look, he is wavering. He is exhausted. He is shaken. He is not stirred. Let's see what happens. Takes another charge in the face from, from, from some Empire Knights and a returning charge from Karl Franz, who pulls up right at the last minute there. But it's down to these two heroes of Ulthuan as the balance of power bar shifts greatly in favor of Faust. He really takes the gold right here, coming in and smashing Tyrion apart. So unfortunately, this is another loss for me, but let's take a look at some of the elements that really kind of contributed to that loss, because this was another loss that was relegated to a few minor clicks or a few miss moves by myself. So taking a look really quick here at the battlefield, a great use of these Demogriff Knights, um, 120 or what, 129 kills between the two of them. Great usage right there by Faust. And also this mortar team was able to come back and do a lot of damage over time, especially some of the con concentrated shells that landed through two or three units at the same time. At the same time, though, we can see over at the High Elves uh, field of battle, a lot of really great damage poured out from the Phoenix Guard. Unfortunately, this uh, this was by into a lot of swordsmen and spearmen, which don't really get a huge upward trade and value for me. Uh, but as well, at the same time, we do see the Lord Master of Hoeth getting 68 great kills and 75 on Tyrion. So let's take a look at some of the big blunders that I made. Uh, some of the things that Falcon kind of uh, coached me through and said, hey, don't do these things. <laughs> and then we'll go into the hammer of the day. By hammer of the day, I obviously mean hammer of the game. But let's go ahead and fast forward here. Get things moving a little bit. I did have some initial issues right here uh, in this 
initial kind of setup and movement towards Faust's army, and that really did spell a little bit of slowing of my momentum. Um, that big old, it can't really do much against that shell edge right there. But really, this is huge. Uh, I, I kind of highlighted a little bit, well, I did highlight it, um, but this whole movement of my firing line stopped them from firing overall, and it put them in a very compromising position. Let's go ahead a little bit forward on that. That, like that shell right there, that's a lot of damage I didn't need to take. And that was really because of me being very sloppy with my movement. And I'll, I'll be honest, that is the theme of this entire fight. You can really see that my front line breaks down. The second Faust moves knights here and knights here. Watch it. Uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. You, you'll see how this kind of breaks down so quickly. And right now. What the hell is all this? <laughs> so, I have all these units overlapping over here. I have all these units overlapping over here. And to be honest, it's because I panicked. It's because I saw the knights coming over here, and I said to myself, okay, time to put the spearmen there. Well, why don't I put the Phoenix Guard instead, and I'll put the spearmen back over here. And doing that, I just completely missed aligned everything. I opened up my back line to tons of charges in from Faust. He was able to just really pick me apart at this point. There's no set line of battle. It's kind of loosely a front line right here. And I have some form of backline elements with this, but these guys are so vulnerable. Sure, I did get these Phoenix Guard to kind of screen out the, this unit of Demogriff Knights, but at the same time, I just left so much of my of my formation just gone to shit completely. Uh, this is a really good engagement right here, and it really could have gone well for me had I really kept um, this right here. So... Um, I have the Phoenix on Karl Franz. You see this right there? I moved Tyrion off of Karl Franz. Had I not done that, he would have killed Karl Franz right there. Karl Franz would not have been able to get back in the air. And that is the biggest point of this battle. If, if I had not done that, I would have killed Karl Franz and I would have won. Or maybe I would have won. But I think that that was the biggest thing because Karl Franz continued to threaten Tyrion the entire fight. So... Right there, that's like big blunder, number two. So yeah, I put Tyrion back onto it and the Flamestar Phoenix back onto it. And by that point, okay, he's up in the air again. If I had just kept them on, they would have been able to capsize him and I would have won the day. Well, at least, again, uh, gotten further than I did. Moving forward here, though. And I will say a very poor usage of bombs from the Flamestar Phoenix. That's another thing I really need to get better on is using the abilities of the Phoenix a little bit better. Um, I, I noticed at the last minute I could have done it here. The best way to use these Phoenix Bombs is pull down Alt, left click on the Flamespire Phoenix, drag, you'll see this little thing right here, that's his little uh, unit selection icon, drag it right on top of the unit. That way you can get on top and you don't have to draw a line or, or, or right click to the end of the unit after the fact. It, it requires less micro because once you do that, the Phoenix is going to get to where you want him to get, and you can do your little bombing run. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to miss those bombs. Bomp, 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 bomp. There's one other real big critical miss that we'll get to. And again, like I said, miss, misaligning all my forces, it just continues to be a trend throughout this battle. I mean, look, look how everything is just kind of lapped all over the place. I could have overlapped my fire with my Phoenix Guard. Or, I'm sorry, with my uh, Lothan Sea Guard. Like, there's no reason that they should have been this one nice big line. I should have done concave um, uh, a setup like this, like this, so that I could have been shooting into things with crossfire and infilades, but I was not doing that. I just, I had a very panicky moment with this, and I think a lot of it is a nod to Faust, because I know Faust is a very, very good player, and I wanted to beat him. You know, I was like, oh, I want to I wanna take down the mighty Faust. And by doing that, I beat. I played myself. I DJ Khalid played myself. So, the best advice I can give to anyone who's trying to get better at the game is don't panic. You just realize what your units do and, and where they where they are in the battlefield, and just put them in accordance. Don't really think that you have to do. Um, I'll focus on this. Don't think you have to um, have all these units in this in this one line all the time like this, 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 and this. If I had just responded properly and more soundly i wouldn't have had this clumped up unit in this box like this take three mortar shells to the face and get deleted if it had been in a nice three stack line like this one it would have been able to take more damage so let's go ahead and keep going 
Nice little pick out there from the Mortar Squad, but that doesn't really amount to much. Phoenix Guard coming around. I'll show you the big pivotal one outside of uh, missing Carl Franz's death. Waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it, wait, wait, wait. Facing around here, getting, see this is that blob up tactical I was talking about. We're coming right around to the end here. Oh, a little bit further. Um, and this is this is really just kind of showing you guys the importance of countering charges with abilities. It's something that we did in the last playthrough that we were talking about with Lokir Felhart and Tyrion. Lokir Felhart popped Occam's Mind Razor and uh, Deadly Duelist, or Dreaded Duelist, and I popped Stand Your Ground and um, Harmonic Convergence to, to to kind of counter those things. We're going to see that same thing happen here in just a little bit, but I completely misplayed it. So I got that health back from Tyrion. Tyrion is terrified off over here. Comes back around, misses this big charge here, and here it is, right around here. So, Bait and Repulsed is a very important ability. Um, it gives you physical resistance, it gives you melee defense, gives you all sorts of things. So, Reichlin Moonfang has been popped onto Karl Franz by Faust. My immediate response when I saw this coming down was, was or it should have been, to, to pop Faint and Repost. But I waited because I was trying to, I think, get, an, I think I was trying to get a cast off. Yeah, I was trying to get this Earth Blood off, I believe. And because of it, boom, devastating hit into Tyrion. I think he took two total hits, including the charge itself. And then I got Faint and Repost down. If I had done it immediately when I saw the charge coming in, which I did see, I saw that charge. I'm like, eh. We'll just get the oh, the heat cast earth blood. Sorry, um, I think I was trying to get this these units called uh, or something. I would have been able to absorb the charge because of the physical resistance and the melee defense, and I would have been able to dish out the damage right back at Carl Franz's face because that was a real big like all in move by Faust. I'm pretty sure um, he had Carl Franz at pretty low health, 1100. So I probably wasn't able to get one or two real solid hits on him. At least enough to push Carl Franz out of this fight and keep Tyrion in this fight. Because I did not do that, I unfortunately lost the day. But that concludes our big fight here for our fight against Faust in uh, our Empire and High Elves match. Let's conclude this video with our hammer of the game. All right, we're about to have both of our front lines clash into each other. I've got my Flamespire Phoenix over Faust Silver Bullets, and we do a bit of a bombing run here. Now, take a look at the health on the uh, Silver Bullets. One drop down knocks a good amount of health down, then another one. And I really got to hand it to Faust for having that split second reaction time, getting his Silver Bullets primarily out of the remaining blasts here and really keeping them alive. I would say that had he not done that, he, his silver bolts would have not stayed around for the remainder of the game to do continued damage on to say the Flamespire Phoenix and some other elements of my army. But um, while there wasn't a huge, huge impact on that, it's it's very rare that you get to see a really awesome bombing run. So I wanted to showcase it here for our hammer of the game. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Hopefully you enjoyed this master cast and learned a little bit more about how to play elements of the competitive multiplayer portion of Total War Warhammer. And you're going to see me grow and get better at this game. But we have another one coming out here pretty soon, uh, this time involving both uh, the M. Uh, no, 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 it's Beastman and Bretonia. So be on the lookout for, for that one in the coming days. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here. Have a good one and take care.